It's been 50 years since Apollo 11 took off for the moon. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first two people ever to set foot on the moon. Our Vladimir Dutier spoke with CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood at the Kennedy Space Center where the historic mission began. So, Bill, here we are 50 years from the day that Apollo 11 launched, just about three miles from where we're seated right. right now. I Just again, I know we've been sort of harping on this for the last a day or so, but just how momentous of an occasion was it? The, to the moment from President Kennedy saying that we need to get to the moon by the end of the decade to July 16th, 1969. Well, it was a tremendous effort, obviously, to, to go from Remember when Kennedy made that pronouncement, we're going to go to the moon in a decade, the United States had a total experience in space of about 15 minutes. You know, <laughs> Alan Shepard's wow. flight on the first Mercury. And he went from that to saying, we're going to go to the moon. And I know a lot of people in NASA were like, kind of, what? You know, we're going to do what? Um, it was a tremendous achievement. You know, historians have said that it may well be in 500 years when you write the history of the 20th century, that's, that's the thing people are going to remember. You know, the... One guy said, uh, you know, Pearl Harbor and the War of the will be like the War of the Roses at that time. Who remembers that, you know? Right. But they will remember Neil Armstrong and they'll remember the first moon landing because that's the first step out of the solar system off the home planet. And, I, you know, what other events in human history can rise to that level of achievement? And we've spent a lot of time today talking about the astronauts, Armstrong, Collins, Aldrin. But to the point that you made, in 1961, it's, I think most Americans would not realize that we didn't know how we would get to space. No, we didn't know what kind of a rocket we would need. We didn't know if the moon was soft, solid, able to hold a lunar module, let alone a man. Right. We didn't know any of those things. So when Kennedy said yeah. that, not only did it come as a shock, I'm just trying to think back, or I wasn't there, but I'm trying to think about all of what the scientists and the people in these buildings around us had to start thinking about to get us to that point. Oh yeah, and it's, it's more than that, there weren't any buildings around us back <laughs> right. then. You know, the Kennedy Space Center didn't exist. They were launching their rockets from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, which is kind of behind me off in the distance. Uh, they really were doing it from scratch. They had very small rockets. They knew they were gonna need a really big rocket to send astronauts and the hardware you need to go to the moon. That ended up being the Saturn V, still the most powerful rocket that ever flew. Uh, just the, it's, it's almost inconceivable today when you think about it and the amount of money that had to be spent to turn that dream into reality. In inflation adjusted dollars, the Planetary Society recently went back and reevaluated the cost. And Apollo, if you look at it in that context, in today's dollars, was around $288 billion. Wow. It's a huge amount of money. It's a huge amount of money. Uh, I've been saying, you know, it's remarkable. Walter Cronkite uh, anchored 27 of 30 hours of live coverage of Apollo 11. He did it from right where we are right now. But this building, although it looks very similar, and we were looking at some of the pictures uh, downstairs that are posted on our walls of Cronkite and other CBS News correspondents broadcasting from this very area, this isn't the original building that Walter was no. in. No, it's not. Uh, CBS had a two-story wooden building, a wood construction type building uh, here back in the days of Apollo and back in 1988. Uh, this was after the Challenger disaster, but before flights resumed, a, a tornado came through this press site. Which and is it wasn't a, it, Yeah, it, it wasn't a, a devastating tornado, but it was enough to do serious damage to the CBS building. And so in the wake of that damage, they didn't have any choice but to, but to build something new and they came up with this building. So you're right. It's not the same building that Walter Cronkite is in, was in, but it's the same footprint. We're in the same place where he was. And that's, that's kind of fun here 50 years later, looking out at Pad A out there where, where Saturn V took off with Apollo 11. Yeah, and I did have an opportunity earlier to talk to a couple of journalists who actually covered the Apollo 11 launch. There are not that many of them left. Yeah. Uh, there were thousands that were here, um, and there were just a half a dozen that I right. ran into uh, earlier today. Um, I, you know, just the idea of covering this and being here and watching and witnessing it on television um, and through newspapers, it sort of changed the way we communicate with the new, with the public, with, mm -hmm. as reporters. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no question about it. And that's evolved over time along with the technology. You know, we, it's, it's hard to remember now, but when you think about 50 years ago, there were three television networks, right? <laughs> uh, PBS had just come along and that was it, yeah. you know, from a, from a video standpoint. Today, of course, you've got this universe of social media, multiple TV channels, it's, it's, it's so much more immediate now than it was then, but, but it gives you a better sense of how people were hanging on 
to Walter Cronkite's words as he described that launch. It was, he was, he, that, that was the, the pathway into everybody's home. Uh, and I was certainly watching CBS. <laughs> and uh, I remember it very well, watching the, the moon landing that night I was with my best friend in high school back in Tennessee. And, uh, but I, I can't say I watched it for that many hours in a row, but we were certainly watching. And I think that's another thing to remember. This mission captured everybody's imagination. And so people might not have sat there for 30 hours and watched one show continuously, but I guarantee you, everybody was paying attention. Bill Harwood, always great to talk to you. It's so great to talk to you in person. Oh yeah, much, much fun. Much. Come down more often. Yeah, I will, thank you. <laughs>